Hello, sports fans. It is I know my back with another card opening video for your entertainment. But today I'm not opening any cards. I'm talking about cards because we are in a new year and it got me thinking, what can we expect as hobbyists in 2024? So happy new year. First of all, I am recording this on New Year's Day. Not quite sure if it'll post today or tomorrow. I also did just drop a video before I thought of recording this one. So I don't want to jam up your feed too much. That video, by the way, is easily the best Topps Heritage box I've ever opened that didn't have an autograph in it. Holy cow! Dual Relic, a nickname variant, a rookie action variant. Crazy. So check that out if you get a chance. Uh, you can't miss it because it's the only thumbnail I've got on the channel that has Macho Man Randy Savage in the thumbnail. So check that out if you haven't already. So here are some things that I think we can expect this year. Um, first and foremost, I don't know about you all, but I'm really excited about Fanatics taking over Tops. I think that the people in charge of Fanatics are very intelligent and very creative. We saw those rookie debut patches in 2023 Tops Chrome update. If you don't know what I'm talking about, they're putting this little patch on the sleeve of all the rookies during the first game that they play. And then they take the patch off and they put it on a baseball card the next year. So they are true one of ones. There's no way to replicate that. And that patch actually was worn by that player during their major league debut, which is, I think, as far as creativity and collectability, really hard to beat if you get a Tanaka or a Volpe or any of the other hotter rookies from the bigger market teams, Corbin Carroll, James Altman. You know, if you get that card, you're pretty much paying for your kid's college with that card because they're going to be so valuable. I personally am of the opinion that the hobby is very healthy. I think the hobby is going to become more popular in 2024. I think that the long-term health of the hobby is definitely there. There's a lot of people my age, I'm 46, or a little bit older than me, who are kind of grumpy. If you look at uh, comments on any YouTube channel, including this one, and I'm guessing I'm going to get some comments just for saying all this, you get you see these kind of grumpy comments like uh, the hobby is broken. Uh, it's just gambling now. The hobby has been ruined. Kids can't get into the hobby anymore. Yada, yada, yada. That's completely untrue, in my opinion. So in my opinion, the hobby has actually never been healthier because you can go to Target and you can buy a pack of Topps Opening Day or Topps Big League for just a few dollars. So any kid and any person on any budget can actually successfully collect. You can collate a set. You can try to get cards of your favorite team, cards of your favorite player. And I got into the hobby in 1988. So when I got into the hobby, there was no game used relics. There was no, I should say there were no autographs. There were no parallels. It just wasn't a thing. I was trying to get Red Sox cards, despite the Diamondbacks hat, because I do live in Arizona now. I'm a huge Red Sox fan. I was trying to get Red Sox cards. I was trying to get, you know, Dwight Evans. I was trying to get Wade Boggs. I was trying to get Roger Clemens. I was trying to get my very favorite player, James Edward Rice. I was trying to get Will Clark, who was another big favorite of mine. That's who I was going for. And I would trade with my friends, as many of you in my demographic used to do. There was no eBay. Maybe if you were lucky, there was a baseball card shop near you. That's still true. So that demographic is still represented. It was 50 cents a pack for Tops. When Upper Deck came out in 89, it was a dollar a pack because you had that much more quality. People were complaining in 1989 that Upper Deck had ruined the hobby by doubling the price point. And then they, of course, had, I think, unless I'm wrong, the very first chase cards because the Ken Griffey Jr. rookie was a chase card of sorts. The Michael Jordan short print certainly was a chase card for sure. It was always thus, as they say. You know, as long as I've been collecting, there were people being like, well, they're too expensive, da, 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 da. And there were people buying the lower end stuff because that's what they enjoyed and or that's what they could afford. All that that's doing is opening up a segment to other kinds of collectors, to high end collectors who have disposable income. Uh, to breakers who can afford to buy that product and then people can buy into the break and have the thrill of maybe hitting that $10,000 card without having to spend thousands of dollars for that opportunity. To me, that's awesome. Now, as to the point of the gambling question, I, I don't deny that that's a problem. I don't think that that's a healthy thing to do. So how is it different from gambling? Because when you gamble and you lose, you have nothing to show for it. 
when you buy baseball cards, even if you don't get a huge card, you still have something tactile to show. And you can choose what to do with that. You can trade the card. You can keep the card. You can sell the card. You can donate the card to charity. This is why I don't collect football or hockey or basketball, because I'm only into baseball as a sport. My grandfather played minor league baseball for the Red Sox. My dad grew up playing baseball. My dad and I spent tons of time. Uh, he coached my teams, you know, playing baseball, going to Fenway. I mean, back when you could afford to go to Fenway a lot, <laughs> like we did. So I just have so many good memories of that. I love baseball. If I were to start buying football products trying to get that big hit, there's no question that that's gambling because I don't draw any joy from having football cards in my hand. But if you draw joy from having baseball cards in your hand, if you draw joy from being in a break, not because you're desperate to get that big hit and sell it and make a little money, which, yeah, that's really gambling if that's your objective. But if you're buying into a break, as I have done many times, just to have something to do to entertain yourself on an evening. I mean, do you want to spend 20 bucks going to the movies and getting a burger? Or do you want to spend 20 bucks being in a break? It's kind of up to you. Again, the presence of the higher end products, the presence of breakers, to me, that's not ruining the hobby. That's giving you different ways to enjoy the hobby, different avenues to enjoy the hobby. We live in an amazing time where we can even do that. Like the fact that you can be in a break is crazy and it's awesome. The fact you can get on eBay and get cards of your favorite player, it's just easy like that. That's that's amazing. 12 year old me would have loved that to be able to just get online and get Jim Rice cards. It's a wonderful time to be a baseball card collector in my opinion, because there's just so much available. And not to mention all of the friends that I made through the channel, all of you guys who support me, I'm talking to you, Jason in Vermont, and I'm talking to all the other people that, that enjoy the channel. The fact that there's people like Peds and the fact that there's people who I enjoy their videos and I got inspired to start this channel are now subscribed to the channel. I mean, that's crazy. That makes me so happy. And there's so many of you that I could shout out. Who's your polls, watches and comments on my videos? And it's so awesome. Like someone that inspired me to start the channel. So Hopefully I'm inspiring some of you guys to enjoy the hobby more and maybe even start your own channel. So the fact that we can be so interconnected in this way through the joy of collecting in this day and age is amazing. So the hobby is very, very healthy. I don't think we need to worry about that at all. I think that SGC is really going to become the card grader of choice. PSA, I think, is always going to be the gold standard just because they've been around the longest and for whatever reason, the marketplace values their cards the most. But SGC has really become a legitimate option. People like the tuxedo look of their encased cards. It's a little less expensive to go through them. It's a little quicker to go through them. I think that's really, really valid. And I will also just say that, you know, Beckett, for whatever reason, has fallen off a little because they kind of messed with their formula and they lost some market share when they did that. And I think they're trying to correct that. But still, the fact remains that that's a problem. Also, people want to see the number 10 on their card. And I get it that with BGS that a 10 is like a cut above a 9.5 and a BGS 9.5 and a PSA 10 are the same thing. They've built in that, that half point where they can give you a 10 plus. But I see Beckett continuing to become less popular as a grader. I see PSA continuing to be the granddaddy. And I, I, I think that, you know, legitimately that SGC, if they're not already, will become the silver standard, if you will, if, if PSA is a gold standard. And I read somewhere that actually they are grading the second most amount of cards now after PSA. So I think that that is going to continue as a trend. I also think that you guys are going to see more and more breakers popping up. I'm going to start breaking in 2024. Why wouldn't I? I've got an audience with the channel. I love opening product and I don't have enough money to open as much product as I want to. So I will open product for you guys. I think you're going to see more and more people start doing that because you start to understand that it's not only a way to make a little bit of money, but it's also a way to just enjoy the hobby. At first, I didn't want to do breaking because I, I couldn't imagine an amazing card passing through my hands and having to then ship it to someone. Phil's Pulls was another great example of that, where he would just get so excited. That Cy Young card that he pulled, I'm pretty sure was not for his PC. That was for someone else. But he got to hold a Cy Young autograph. And I want that. And I know that there's other would-be breakers out there. The other thing that we have to think about is demographics. So all of us who got back into the hobby... I know most of you got back into the hobby during the pandemic, but people who are in our mid to late 40s, so people who didn't get out of the hobby once the vaccines showed up, the people who got the bug and kept the bug and stayed in and are still in, we are getting to the point where our kids are starting to go to college. I think that those of us in our 40s represent a huge swath of the hobby. 
if there's a little bit of a bell curve, I think, you know, kids make up a lot of it. Then you have people that are seniors who have collected since they were kids and they still collect and that's awesome. I think we need those demographics as well. Most of the people that I see in card shops, most of the people that I know watch these videos are middle-aged, mostly men, but a lot of women as well. But my point is this, is that as our kids get older, a couple things start to happen. They go to college. What does that mean? That means we have a little bit less disposable income because now we're paying college tuition. Second thing it means is that we have more free time because our kids are out the house. So what is that going to mean? I think that's going to mean more breaks because as a consumer, I want to buy into a break so that I have something to do to entertain me, but I don't necessarily have the money to buy that whole thing. As a breaker, I want to be able to make a little extra money and still be opening product without it spending money. So that's why I think that there's going to be more breakers. I think you're going to see more and more uh, popularity amongst heritage and archives. So flagship is considered to be the kind of the best tops product. And then of course you have all the upper echelon products, but of all the products that are reasonably priced that you can get blasters of at Target or that you can get hobby boxes of pretty easily in that like hundred dollar or so range, I think heritage and archives are going to become more popular. And here's why I, as a consumer, love being able to open a product where I could get a Corbin Carroll autograph, but I also could get a Jim Rice autograph because I want the modern players whom I'm watching now and love. And I also want the guys from when I was a kid. So I think we're going to see a rise in the popularity of those products as, as my demographic starts to discover those heritage and archives give us both. They give us the, the stars of the past and the stars of today. And I understand why uh, a lot of people aren't interested in heritage and archives because they just want the highest end product. And I understand why a lot of younger people are not interested in them because they don't know those players and they just want the modern guys. But I do think that heritage and archives are gonna become more popular and start to not necessarily challenge flagship, but in the same way that I don't think that SGC is going to unseat PSA, I do think that heritage and archives will become very much the one B after Topps flagship as the go-to product for the industry because the industry is being driven by people in my demographic. That's what I and my friends want. So I'm guessing that that's uh, going to happen. Another interesting thing is that I think we're going to see a fall off in the popularity of Topps Chrome. Topps has really blown it with Chrome in the last couple of years. So the first problem was when they didn't put the J-Rod and Torkelson and Bobby Wood Jr. rookie cards in like they were supposed to last year. And then they had those silver packs that you could get by buying hobby packs, but then your odds of hitting something in the silver pack were really minuscule and you couldn't get them from uh, retail. That was a problem. Not to mention the fact that we all know that 2022 Topps Update QC was just trash. We were getting all kinds of miscut cards, off-center cards, just bad, bad, bad. Not to mention the sticker autographs are not optimal. So then this year with 2023 Topps Chrome flagship, they did actually a pretty good job. And the buyback program, of course, is nice because if I can buy a blaster for 35 bucks, I pull an Acuna card that I can get $20 credit for, the economics make sense to, to be buying more Topps Chrome flagship. So I believe they're going to continue that promotion next year. I hope they do. And I think that that will be very helpful. But then 2023 Topps Chrome update was just awful. Just an awful product loaded with guys you've never heard of before and sticker autos. And yes, you can get those, those debut patches that I mentioned before, but I just, I don't think that Topps Chrome has a very bright future. I think people are going to be looking more so to Sapphire as the card to get. If you look just simply at recent sales on eBay, and if you look at Beckett card values, the book value, Chrome cards are sometimes worth the same or less than the flagship rookie of that player. So yeah, we're buying Topps Chrome to get the Chrome autographs, which do tend to hold value, but if you can buy a pack where you get eight or nine cards versus a pack where you get four cards, and if the cards contained therein are worth the same, it, logic dictates that people are going to start catching on to that and Topps Chrome is going to diminish in popularity. The last thing that I just want to throw out there as a prediction for next year is I think you're going to continue to see Panini weaken as an option in the marketplace. The only reason why I opened Panini is because I want to show variety on the channel and I want to show you guys all the different options of what you might be able to buy. Panini is uh, problematic for a number of reasons that we're all aware of. 
First of all is that their customer service is atrocious. I'm still waiting on two redemptions from Panini from 2021. So we're now looking at being in the third year of not having those redemptions. One is of a Trent Grisham color rookie parallel auto, which at the time I could have gotten something in trade or I could have sold it, but he's not that good. So it's not worth anything anymore. The other is a Bo Jackson to 25 auto that I would love to have, but I don't think I'm ever gonna get it at this point. Panini customer service is terrible. Panini hasn't had major league uniforms in quite some time and they can't even show, you know, the logos, which as a true collector, I hate. It's a bummer because I liked having Don Rust and Fleer when I was a kid and score and upper deck as options to Tops. But Tops is the only one with the license to, for MLB logos. So Tops will continue to eat up, you know, the vast majority of the market. The other problem is, is that Panini has now lost their agreement with MLBPA, the uh, players association so not only do they not have a license with mlb they don't have a license with the players association so they can't even show current players so now it's become all prospects and all guys from the past notwithstanding the fact of what i said about i think heritage and archives will become more popular because i want to be able to get the stars of today and yesterday i don't necessarily want a bunch of fringy guys who may never even get in the majors mixed in with a bunch of stars of yesterday who look like they're playing softball because they have no logo on their hat and no logo on their shirt. They literally look like they're just down the road at the you know local high school playing softball. I hate Panini, I know a lot of you hate Panini. When I put up a poll saying, you know, should I open Panini on the, on the channel? I think 11% of you said yes. So I know there's a lot of hate for Panini and I think that's just going to continue to grow. Overall, again, I think the hobby is very healthy. I think that the hobby is going to gain in popularity in the coming year. We are in a bit of a junk era as far as commons go. But the difference between now and the junk wax era of 88 to 90 is that 88 to 90, there's nothing special in there. There's no parallels. There's no autographs. There's no variants. So you're not going to, I don't think we're going to see the the uh, market crater like it did because you have to keep in mind that all of the people that are into the hobby now that got into it during the pandemic, there's a lot of young people in that demographic. So as they start to get to be our age in you know, 20, 30 years, it's just going to continue to perpetuate. There's just going to continue to be love for the hobby. So the hobby is not going anywhere. Values aren't going anywhere. I think that graded cards and inserts and rarer cards, of course, are going to continue to be worth way more. I think that investing in vintage is a good idea because there's limited supply due to the fact that they're not making it anymore. I think demand for vintage is going to continue to go up. They're going to continue to be seen as art pieces. So if you look at, you know, everything was doing what it was doing, and then we had the bubble during COVID, and then it, it crashed, so to speak. Things are still higher than they were before COVID, and I think they're going to maintain and slowly climb as time goes on. So enjoy your collecting. Let me know in the comments what you thought of all of this. I look forward to some constructive dialogue. If you disagree with anything I've said, I'd love to hear it. Let's have some uh, educated discourse, but let's keep it civil. And I'm really looking forward to this coming year with all of you. Uh, let's just keep on ripping and keep on sharing and keep on enjoying trading, selling, buying, doing all the things. Because why? Baseball cards are awesome. And Noma loves you. So keep that smile on your face, everybody. I wish you a beautiful, warm, healthy, happy new year. And we will talk to you very soon. What's up? I'm Kevin Millar. Nomar loves you.